computer. Okay. So the page 29, 10 rules of strength training. This is important in terms of safety. Um, since we've been covering a lot of, you know, things about the form and how to do a, a proper squat and everything, we're just going to kind of um, br briefly summarize them and remind you again how to breathe, how to do the, how to perform the exercises and all. And then we're going to cover the core portion of the class. So the first rule, you have to control your movements when you do strength training or re uh, resistance training or body, uh, body uh, sculpting. It's the same thing. What we mean by this, we said that the way you exercise, the way, way you work out your muscles is through the joint motion, right? So when you focus on the joint motion, if it's a elbow joint flexing or extending, or if it's your spine, again, flexing, rotating, or a laterally uh, flexing, you just have to control the joint motion instead of swinging the weights, pulling on them, using the momentum to move the weight. This is very relevant when we do, for example, bicep curls or lateral raises for the shoulder. I see a lot of people in the gym using the momentum instead of their muscles or their joint by just swinging the weight. If it's too light or if, if it's a bicep curl exercise, using other joints like your, their spine by extension to lift a little heavier. So this is what we're trying to say. No hoisting, no jerky movements, no swinging the weights, just control. So if it takes for you to do less amounts of um, repetitions, then that's fine as long as you do the right motion, okay? The second one is very relevant, again, since again, don't focus on the muscle itself. Focus on the joint motion that you're doing. If it's a bicep curl exercise, we're talking about the elbow. I see this with the lat pull down in the gym. You know, there's this bar, they sit and pull. Um, here, we're trying to work the latissimus muscle, which is the swimmer muscle. And that latissimus muscle, is inserting into your shoulder so it's crossing the shoulder joint so this is this exercise is necessarily for your back more than your biceps if you know that you're supposed to be moving through the full range of motion of the shoulder and initiating the movement from the shoulder instead of putting a hard grip on the handles and using your biceps to pull it down it's mainly a shoulder like I tend to use this example like you're just putting a balloon or a ball underneath your armpit and you're trying to squish it or burst it, okay? So full range of motion of the joint is another important topic. The third one, you have to focus on targeting both opposing muscle groups. So primary mover or agonist versus antagonist. So like the quadriceps, and hamstring, biceps and triceps into your workout. Four, concentrate on the muscles. Research has shown us that if you are lifting weights and if you are focusing on other things <clears throat> other than your muscles or the motion that you're trying to work on, the muscles will engage less than if you were to focus on them and thinking about them when you're trying to work them out. So if you're trying to, let's say, work your core like today, if you bring your mind into your core instead of have, letting your mind wander about you know, other things that you're gonna do after class, then you're gonna end up working them less. So you might as well focus on the workout and you know, get the mo most benefit out of it. Five proper form and technique, I've been, covering this. That's why I'm not adding any more uh, students into this class. They've been asking an, a permission code since last week, and I'm saying no because we covered the basics and the safety guidelines already, and I'm not going to be able to 
uh, have you safely in this class. So proper form and technique. Please do not uh, go through many repetitions just for the sake of doing many repetitions and uh, compromise your form. And breathing, number six. This is important to understand in the gym too. Um, when you do the work, when you lift weights, there are two phases of the movement, right? When you lift and when you reset, like the bicep curl, when you lift it, you do the work. The muscles will uh, use up energy and work out. And when you bring them back toward the floor, that's the resetting phase of the exercise. So the, the rule is when you do the work or when you exert, you have to exhale. So when you lift, I tend to not use that lift, exhale, lower, inhale, because it's the opposite when it comes to squat. When you squat, when you go down, that's the resetting. When you push up to get up to standing, that's when you do the work. So whenever you do the work, you have to exhale. Exert starts with a, a letter E. Exhale, again, same thing, letter E. So just try to memorize or remember it that way. Exert and exhale. Then when you relax or reset, you have to inhale, okay? Seven, no pain. Um, of course, you know, when you work your muscles out, it's going to hurt a little bit because there's the, the concept of breaking down the muscle tissue so that it can grow bigger. That's the DOMS actually, or the muscle soreness that you feel the day after. So there's going to be a little pain, but if it's a pain of the joint, that's why I was asking um, who that was, Viviana, I think, if. Um, the knee joint was hurting or the, the muscles around the knee were sore. So if the muscles are sore, that's fine. <clears throat> but if there's a pain in the joint and that pain is not familiar, uh, then we should stop, okay? So there should not be any pain. You know, no pain, no gain doesn't work here. Vary your program, um, yeah. Just doing the same thing over and over again is not gonna work because your body will adapt to it. That's the basic principle of exercise. The reason that we're exercising because we want our body to adapt to the given challenge. But if that challenge is being repeated over and over again, it's not gonna be a challenge anymore. It, your body will get used to it and it's gonna be a piece of cake and it, your body will not grow. So you won't see any results. You have to vary your program, and that depends on your goal. Uh, varying is very, um, how do I say, limitless, okay? Varying your repetitions, the weight, the movement, lots of options. We don't have to know all of them, but we have to understand that we have to keep overloading the body with something. Can be a technique, can be repetitions, weight, doesn't have to be weight only, or the number of times that we do the workout in a week, those are the uh, var uh, variables that you can vary. Nine major body part early in the session. This is important. I had um, an assignment done by my uh, students in the last semester. I'm not gonna have you do this. Uh, about program design. When you work, design a workout, let's say you're just going to go hit the gym tomorrow and you want to have something laid out on a piece of paper before you go or in your head so that you know what you're going to do so you, don't, you, you, know, you don't waste time. The way you order, the, the order is another variable in your exercise program, by the way, and it's very important. So think about this. You're going to Work your upper body tomorrow, and there is a lat pull down, there is a bench press, okay, exercises that you want to do so that you can work the chest or lats. But before you do all those exercises, you went there and did your bicep curls and tricep extensions, and they're wasted. Then you want to lay down on the bench and do the bench press, or you want to sit down on the lat pull down machine and pull. 
there is no way you can do those. So the, the rule of thumb is to do the bigger muscle group exercises first or major body parts first in the program and then do the small muscle groups like your calves, like your biceps, those are accessory muscle groups, which means they're assisting other larger muscles in the movement. So when I do the lat pull down, my biceps are assisting the movement. If they're already tired, that's the weakest link in the system. They're, my body won't be able to do the lat pull down, even though the mid, the majority of the work will be done with my lap. My biceps are still working, and if they're like totally wasted from the workout that I just did, you won't be able to do the lat pull down. Okay, so major body part early in the session. And what is the uh, largest muscle in the body? What do you think? The quadricep. Yes, your legs, exactly. Your glutes and your legs are the largest muscle groups in the body, so they have to be done in the beginning. If you're doing a functional type of ex or full body exercise, then when you're doing the full body means you're working your lower and upper body in conjunction, like in one exercise, like the squat press, for example. Uh, you have to include the legs, in all the exercises in a functional workout, but when you add an upper body ex uh, uh, exercise into a lower body exercise, try to think of the larger upper body muscle groups like the lats, shoulders, back first, then adding the biceps and triceps, okay? Biceps and triceps are those muscle groups that need to be saved for the last for your workout if that workout is not a split workout if it's a full body workout and the last one warm up with dynamic stretches cool down gradually with static stretches we already covered that on the first day again it's the importance of not going through static stretching before your big event which is your workout rather than doing dynamic stretches which is mainly a movement like uh, your typical squat or your just joint movements mobility exercises before the workout and then after the workout when your muscles are nice and warm resilient then you do the lengthening static stretching and i really would like you to not skip the cool down because it's your chance to work on lengthening your muscle groups instead of putting uh, time, you know, uh, you know, separately for flexibility exercises. If you, I mean, that's a, a waste of opportunity. Uh, if you skip the cool down with static stretches, then you have to work on your flexibility on another day. And the smart way of doing it is just after a workout. Okay. Any questions? I want to ask a question about the major party parts. That means that the leg, the shoulder, the back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Chest. In the upper body, the yeah. knee. Yes. Okay. In the, on the upper body, chest, your back, uh, and then the shoulders, and then the arms. The lower body, the upper uh, legs, like the quadriceps, hamstrings, and glutes, and then your calves. So the chest first and then the shoulder? Chest and back first and then the shoulder and then the upper arm and look back, you know, upper arm, back and front. Okay. Thank Good you. question. Yes. Yeah, I just wonder, yeah, how could we de define the major parts of the body? That means yes. that, yeah. yeah so, very good, very good question. And also, I would like to point out the fact that where does the core, um, fall into the cat in this category the core that's a big phenomenon in the fitness industry the experts are discussing if the core needs to be done in the beginning or in the pat in the on the end what do you think in the beginning yep oh and Adina, you're here finally i was able to get on sorry it was okay late. We'll take care of the quiz. Don't worry about it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, core 
the latest now, the research shows us the benefits of doing the core in the beginning as part of the warm up. You know, if you're not really, um, if your goal is not to work the core per se for the workout that day, but you still want to do some core workout, then you have to include that in, in as a part of your warm up uh, and do some core in the beginning and then you know, whatever you, you want to work on that day, do those exercises afterwards. Very good. Okay. Um, it would be beneficial to do the core um, so that you don't get hurt? Uh, in terms of the lower back, yes, definitely. Before your body is too tired, uh, especially neuromuscularly, like your coordination and your brain gets really tired after a workout, if you do the core in the beginning, that's going to be more safe. Okay. Very good point. Thank you. So what is core? Let's get to that. See, I devoted another section in that handout to core because it's important. The muscle groups or the body parts in the core are abs, of course, like most people know. They think that the core is only abs, but core means the center, the, the midsection. So the core is not just your front. Yes, abs are in part of it, but of course I have the sides, okay? And I have the back, I have the, also it's a 3D, okay, uh, item, if you will. It's not just one dimensional where you see it from the front. There's bottom of it, there's top portion of it. So the top portion even includes your shoulders. Some people, you know, think that, you know, shoulders are included in the core too, but mainly the top portion of your rib cage, okay, from the front, from the back, just think of it as a 3D. And the front portion includes your abs, rectus abdominis, which is the most superficial six pack muscle, transverse transverse abdominus is the deepest right underneath your belly button which stabilizes your pelvis and obliques are those abdominals on the sides which makes you look like a triangle you know if you really um, sculpt them if you will and the back of course the erector sp spinae which is the big muscle the most superficial around your uh, spine and latissimus dorsi or dorsi, the swimmer muscle, lats. Okay, again, the back is part of your core, and the glutes, the bottom, and the pelvic floor muscles, all the glutes, maximus, medius, minimus, which are three different muscle groups. Uh, and you don't have to memorize them, but understand abs, back, and glutes are included in the core. Okay, for those who are interested in knowing the names of the muscles, here they are. Uh, and they're not as detailed, okay? And the movements, what can core do? Again, this is another discussion in the fitness industry. Is, has, has core been created by the creator for movement or for stabilization? There are two different views on this matter. Okay, some people think that your core, just think about yourself trying to stand up straight in a bus, okay? There's no place to sit, so you're in the middle in the bus and you're trying to hold your position not to fall over. So that's your core that gets activated right then because when the, the bus is, keeps moving back and forth or sideways, you don't wanna fall to the ground. So your core gets activated in place, okay? Without any movement, it just flexes the muscles so that you stay stabilized. That's the no movement portion of the core, task of the core, okay? Also, your core can move, okay? So right now, for example, if I'm gonna get a, if I'm fighting, okay, and if I'm bracing, because my opponent is gonna kick me in the, in the gut. So I'm bracing and I'm flexing my muscles, I'm contracting, but I'm not moving my spine whatsoever. That's the stabilization. 
final flexion is when I move forward, okay? Flexing my spine, okay? Those are your typical crunches. Whatever you do by bending your spine forward, that's the flexion. The opposing motion of the flexion is extension. When you move the spine backwards, working the back muscles, okay? And there's also lateral spinal flexion. So you're trying to move sideways so your spine can move that way too. And finally, rotation, which is the most, I should say, put, uh, which has the, the most potential for injury. If your core muscles or the section is not strong enough to, you know, um, handle that rotation through your vertebrae. Yes, there are lots of things to discuss, but this is mainly what I want to cover for the sake of this class. Uh, the uh, more detail is needed for other classes. For the body sculpting, this is enough. Any questions? So the, the movements of the core includes stabilization, flexion extension, and lateral flexion and rotation. So what are the typical, I mean, it's impossible to list all the exercises, okay, that is available for you. But I kind of categorize them under the position, body position. Prone means chest down, face down, okay? You're on your stomach, laying on the ground. So for abs mainly, all the plank variations. You don't have to be laying on the ground to call that body position prone. Uh, you have to be facing down. So on your elbows, doing a regular plank is a great prone core exercise. And when you analyze the exercise, that's the stabilization, right? Because your spine doesn't move. You don't move, but you're still flexing or contracting the muscles of your core. So plank, all the variations, I'll show you. Plank hold, that's what we did for our pretest. Plank hold with arm and leg reaches. So we're gonna get one arm reaching forward, reaching to the side or the leg, okay? So we're gonna sway forward and backward in the plank, shoulder tapping with the opposite hand when we're in the plank. Hip rotation, um, yeah, we're gonna turn the hip out and in, out and in. Rowing, that's also another core exercise, believe it or not, because it's a back exercise. You can sit and do your rows with a nice posture. Your core is, again, stabilizing that posture. Step through, rowing in the, in the plank, by the way. Again, we're in the plank, still doing some rows. Punching in the plank. Step through. I'll show you what it is. Uh, mountain climber. I bet you already know this one. It's very popular in, on Instagram. Uh, downward, DFD stands for downward facing dog. I'll sh I sh already showed you. But we can also alternate a downward facing dog to plank. And then touch the toes with the opposite hand. Downward facing dog to one leg extension to push up. It's like a Spider-Man push-up. Rotational plank, um, turning sideways from the plank position. I'll show you today, side planks with hip dips. So you're facing the side on one arm and then dipping your hips down and up, down and up. Uh, for back, mainly, again, in the prone position, we just do the back extensions when our chest is down on the floor. Supine is when you lay on your back, face up for your abs. You guys already know all the crunches. Dead bug, marching, leg raises, those are for stabilization. You don't move your spine. I'll show you what they are. All the crunch variations are flexion of the spine. Wood choppers, crisscrosses, those are uh, spinal rotations and will work the obliques. X-Men, Jackknife, these are advanced levels. And um, again, those are optional. I'll show you how they're done. For your glutes, we do the hip thrust, which I already showed you. 
and bridge and standing anything again like i said that's gonna challenge your balance anything that's going to ch challenge your balance or anything that's going to challenge upper and lower body at the same time will work your core for for example lunge squat with arm movements especially if that arm movement has uh, uh, rotations okay with medicine ball dumb dumbbells kettlebells wood choppers i'll show you across the body like you're holding an axe and there are wood um, bunch on on the floor and you're trying to chop them with your axe um, others there are lots of other options i just kind of listed them these are hard to understand without a, a machine cable uh, and that requires an access to a gym so i'm just going to skip those so we're going to be doing the standing supine and prone variations today again um, you don't have to do all the repetitions today but for the sake of learning how to do it properly i would like you to try some um, like five to ten repetitions today any questions